Welcome back to Treetop Flight, where I'm building a RANS S21 outbound plane. I've got to be honest, I have went into a builder's void for the last six to eight weeks where other things in life just seem to take priority. Uh, I'm not sure if others have gone through it or uh, have experienced it, but it really took me away from doing what I love to do, and that's building the plane. And it took a sit-down conversation with myself to say, hey, get back to work. This is what you want to do, and you want to be flying this thing. Um, and I love building it, but I also can't wait to fly it also. Uh, so this is going to be a quick video. I'm going to cover some learnings about coax antenna cable, another one of those items I didn't have prior experience on, and there's some learning curve to, to learn about terminating ends and, and the, the different coax types. So I'm going to post a little bit of learnings on that, get this put up on YouTube, and get back to building my plane. So thanks for joining me. I am uh, continuing my build and working on the panel. A new skill set for me are these coax cable terminations with the BNC and the TNC connectors. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about what I've learned, but again, this is instructional. This just may help someone out. As far as cable, uh, the new standard is uh, RG400. Most of the older general aviation planes were RG58, uh, but the, the 58 does not work well with higher frequencies and your ADS transponder and others are requiring the, the uh, better quality of the RG400. There's also an RG142, which has a solid core and the RG400 has a braided core. So it's a little more flexible and more common in general aviation. Uh, RG58 apparently is still okay for, for comm radios, uh, but they're saying that, that once you get the RG400, it's just a better quality uh, that to uh, do your entire plane and the RG400 is a good bet. Um, as far as pricing, uh, Stein Air and Spruce, others have RG400 for around five and a half, six dollars a foot. You can get Amazon online, which a lot of the ham radio operators swear by for about a dollar a foot. You make the call what you want to buy. As far as connectors, uh, you've got the BNC connectors, which are those kind of quarter turn spring loaded connectors and the TNC connectors, which are the old screw type. Uh, most of the plane seems to have BNC from the antennas that I purchased. Um, as far as splicing BNC connectors, you got to make sure you get connectors that are RG 400. Um, I think I've run into my first glitch where uh, these connectors, these are Meeker, uh, Meeker connectors. Uh, they claim they are good for RG58 and 400, but it looks like the sleeve is not big enough to go up over the uh, cable and the, the braiding. Uh, and they, I've read that that is a problem sometimes for people that claim that they are good for both. RG400 is just a little bit, one millimeter wider than RG58. And these sleeves have to be just a little bit bigger to accompany both. So it looks like I'll be sending all of these back. These are my male, my female, and my TNC connectors. Um, and trying to find one that fits uh, the RG400. Um, so that's what I've learned up to date. And all oh, your splicers have to be for RG400. Um, your pins have to be RG4. Everything's got to be specific to RG400. So don't just assume your RG58 stuff's going to work because most likely it will not. Well, somehow I lost the footage of the first steps of adding the connectors or making the connections. Uh, there's tons of instructions online. So I'll just finish up with how I solved my collar issue and then finalize the coax terminations. Okay, uh, I mentioned previously how I couldn't get this collar over the strands of material uh, and that the RG400 was a little thicker and maybe these were RG58 uh, connectors, even though the package said they were good for RG400. Uh, I went online and got a couple tips and what people had said you could do is uh, the first thing is try tap it down. So I took a pair of vice grips. Uh, I didn't have an open end wrench small enough or small enough to, to work well. So I used a pair of small vice grips, set the diameter so it just slid over it, laid the 
connector flat and then just tapped the collar down gently so it slid over that seemed to work for me someone else said that because these strands are forming a ground and that's their purpose you can actually cut some of the strands away uh, trimming them uh, to lessen the the uh, thickness of the strands in here to make the collar a little simpler but the tapping method worked for me it went over and then I crimped it and that is that's snug I can't pull that apart no matter how hard um, and then there is the, the connectors that I have do ha come with a a heat shrink tube that'll go on as my final step um, but that's that's uh, what I've learned and what I've done so far with our uh, with coax connectors again these are not instructional I am learning this for the first time just passing on what I've learned so far about some of this uh, coax connecting I've got the uh, coax terminations done with my BNC connectors I like the way they came out they worked out well I did do uh, resistance test and everything seems to be working fine on them I've got uh, transponder GPS com 1 com 2 I'm actually waiting for some connectors I decided to put the 90 degree connectors on the two that go up uh, to the um, top of the the fuselage the uh, the little loop that's created without the 90 degree uh, I just know I'm gonna catch something on it putting some in there so I, I did order the 90 degrees and I'm gonna put them on the um, the com and the uh, uh, GPS antenna uh, but after you learn the knack of it it wasn't that tough glad I got it done and on to the next part of the panel well I'm gonna wrap that one up here as I said it's gonna be a quick uh, a quick video thanks for watching and remember dream it and just keep building it <laughs>